Hi, I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! Hi, Mimi. Howdy, Leron. How are you? I'm I'm okay, and hi to you guys out there. Yes, how are you? And, um, you know, I I have a confession to make. I didn't keep any stats this week. Oh, my God. I just forgot. You're fired. (laughs) No, but I'll do you one better, because instead of spending, you know, like 30 seconds talking about the stats... I'm going to spend 30 seconds telling you that tonight on TNT, you can see Julie Andrews getting the AFI award. Finally. Finally. What took them so long? Exactly. I mean, it's not like she couldn't be worthy of it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, just I saying. I think they were trying to wait till she could be rolled in on a gurney. Yes, and until almost everybody who could have spoken for her is no longer with There's us. There's still a lot of people who can speak for There's her. There's still a lot of really big people who died just yes. in the last couple of years oh, because they waited. No. Anyway, watch Julie get her AFI today, tonight. Um, so see, did I make up for not having stats today? Not exactly. Julie is better than stats. Yes. Okay. And here is something even better. Okay. We have a new movie to recommend to you. Yes. And yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, I'll have what she's having, <laughs> which is Emma Thompson. Just saying. I'll have I wish. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so this movie is called Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. It's going to open on Hulu tomorrow, Friday, June 17th, which is why we were in such a hurry to tell you about it today. We don't want you to spend one minute while it's out not watching it. Uh, Directed by Sophie Hyde, written by Katie Brand, and really starring two people. That's Uh, it. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple here and there, but of not really consequence. Uh, Emma Thompson. And a lovely young man called Daryl McCormack. Uh, he's relatively a newcomer. He's been on Picky Blinders, but I think you'll see him more after this. He's adorable and uh, very good. Very good. Um, to to go toe to toe with Emma Thompson and, and, for an hour and a half and genital to genital. <laughs> <laughs> now you're giving it away. <laughs> All right. What is this about? The the the, the general story. Is about um, a, a woman of Emma's age, uh, early 60s, who is recently widowed, and she's a former uh, religion, religion teacher. education yeah. teacher, um, who is now reevaluating her life and realizing that she's never truly allowed herself or had the, ex- uh, the opportunity to experience sexual pleasure. And she's hiring this young man who is a sex worker. Uh, They meet in a hotel room. The entire movie takes place pretty much in that hotel Mm -hmm. room. Uh, And it's all about her self-exploration facilitated by his beautiful, insightful, you know, intuitive help. Um, And their mutual exploration and... and, um, uh, I love how Emma keeps talking about this as this is an intimate but not a romantic relationship, right. which is something that is very unusual for movies. Um, and it's just a gorgeous film. It is. Uh, it is It is really a sort of breathtaking in its small way. Um, and uh, at first I thought, oh, this is going to be just talking. What's going on here? Blah, 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 blah. Although all the blah, blah, blah well, is very brilliant. interesting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's and really well it's delivered. It's well written, uh, perfectly delivered, um, wonderfully directed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just gets better and better and m- more intimate and uh, in every way. More revealing in more every revealing. way. More um, revealing. Uh, it's just... A gorgeous film. And the reason that it's talky at the beginning is because this is how she has always kept control over her life. She she's she she wants to do, but she is in her head about it and yeah. she can't get herself to actually do it, so they talk and well, they talk. Well it's also postponement. Yes, that's yes, what I'm saying. It's total she, she postponement can't she can't get the, uh, she can't act. get herself to do it. So this is how she she just overthinks everything and she talks about it. Um, but, but it's but, but it's, oh go ahead sorry no no you I was just going to say for those of you who have seen a perfect ending yes it's and a Nicole similar comes, concept it it starts off very very much and actually proceeds um, 
very much along that line. It's a very different but it's a story. different story. Yes, but it's also it, it's very similar in, in first of all, I think that also Barbara uh, Niven was very um, uh, brave, brave in her exposure. Yes, and um, and you know we, we watched Emma Thompson talk yesterday, and when we say somebody is brave, it's not because oh my mm-hmm. God she revealed her imperfect body. It's because she finally revealed what most people need to see, which is not the illusion, not the fantasy, not the body that people get when they hurt themselves um but the but real people and a real uh, person uh because the boy is perfect <laughs> yes well the boy is young and as he said yes, he works, he hard, works for hard for it. he said that and i love mm-hmm. that he said that you know uh, People it's don't part look... of his package. It's part of what he delivers as a sex worker. But again, not to not to uh, keep the illusion going that people just look that way because they roll off, be- you know, from bed in the mm-hmm. morning and that's what they look like. No, they work at it, or they hurt themselves, or they, you know, they pay a price. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially, uh, you know, he's twenty, she's sixty, she's lived a well, life. She's, he's a little more than twenty. He's in his twenties. Yeah. But but anyway, she's yeah. lived a life. Yes. And uh, and that's part an of the beauty. One, but... That's part of well, no, but I mean even Emma. Yeah. Yes. Um, the beauty of everything about her, you know, all of the, everything that's supposedly not perfect is the life that she's lived. Um, and it's so beautiful. And I personally got teary eyed when, when she stood in front of that mirror so and took her I. clothes off. Uh, first of all, because I know how much, how exposed it is for an actor to do that. Um, it's exposed for a person to do that. I exactly. can't bear to look at myself in the mirror naked. But this is why that yes, was so important. Absolutely. And I, I so salute her for doing that because I think so many people need to see that um, to feel more validated in themselves that this is what a real person looks like. Uh, and we, you know, we're constantly surrounded by these images that are impossible sometimes impossible sometimes literally because they're photoshopped or filtered or you know somehow uh, altered but even in movies you know makeup and angles and light and all those things are done again and starving and, and uh, exactly not to mention the things that people exercising. do to themselves right i always look at someone's arms and you can tell when they work out because their <laughs> arms are always you know muscular and perfect well, again, so people pay a price, and, and it's a shame that so many people, um, I mean, I understand that the pressure is very, very intense when you work in Hollywood, but it's such a shame because the, every person who um, allows these people to dictate how they need to look also leads to so many other people thinking that that's how you need to look, and everybody is just kind of going in, around and around in a circle of shame and um and disappointment and self-loathing and it's it's unnecessary and to look at this woman who i have admired for decades me many more decades even (laughs) well she's only been alive for a certain amount of years yes but i've been alive for (laughs) quite a bit longer than you Um, it was just oh god i wanted to hug her so much i wonder how many women after seeing this will go and stand naked in front of a mirror Hey, how about you today? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I challenge you. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm anyway, not falling for it. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you all watch it. Yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. And uh, although these things don't really matter, it's not going to be eligible for an Academy Award because it's not being shown in theaters. And I think that that sucks. I think that... Uh, COVID, you know, maybe they open theaters, maybe people are going to the theaters more right now, but I think that COVID has changed the way people are viewing films forever, uh, which is something that has already been happening anyway with the advent of streaming, so many streaming services and original content from streaming services that I really think the Academy Awards should should just accept it and change their rules permanently. Yes, especially, Um, I don't remember what it was, but uh, last year a streaming film won Best Picture. Uh, Coda, wasn't it? It was Coda. Was that only a, Apple TV. Was that only a streaming film? Wow. Apple TV, yeah, Apple TV Plus. Um, and by the way, also, it's important to mention, um, uh, I love the depiction of a sex worker in a different way from what they usually depict Such them like. Such a lovely boy. Uh, that it doesn't have to be, you know, she even said at some point, are you an orphan or something? What, what is your sad story? <laughs> yes, exactly. That you had to go into this profession. And uh, I think t- he he might be a sex worker, but he's almost like a sex therapist. He really is. Yeah. It, he's like a professional sex uh, uh, surrogate. Yeah, but the entire conversation about sexuality and pleasure and people being allowed to explore Explore that, and I do want to quote um, the uh, director Sophie Hyde uh, because I love what she said about this. And she said, 
I would like audiences to go out feeling so released, so much freer and braver, brave enough to say, finally, you know, what do you want really? How do you experience pleasure? Do you allow yourself to experience pleasure? And if you don't, then why not? Where do you carry your shame and why are you ashamed? Why are pain and pleasure and shame so inextricably linked? And I would say especially for women. Especially for women. Good luck to you, Leo Grand. The title, really, I don't understand why, but... Well, I understand. No, I mean, I understand. It comes from the film. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's just that it's, um, I don't yeah, know, I think it's the best misleading. title for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I don't think it's about him. She should be. It's about her mm-hmm. more than him. Uh, anyway, starting tomorrow, it is on Hulu, June 17th. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Okay, next up, we have a, a new Israeli series on Netflix. It's called The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem. 27 episodes, which they all count as one season. I don't know That's if maybe That's sort of like a telenovela. Yeah, I don't know if maybe in Israel it was more than one season. I don't know. Anyway, uh, of all the people who star in it, I don't expect you to really know anybody by name, except maybe Michael Aloni, who stars in Shtisel. Shtisel. Um By and the several way... several other... Uh, Oh, um, yes, but I think for Americans, yeah. he is more, most familiar from Stissel. And by the way, you Fauda fans out there, uh, it is starting, the fourth season is premiering in Israel July 13th, which means it should come on Netflix around September, and I'm really excited yeah. about that. Don't, don't try to hold it in your memory, though. We'll remind you again. I will remind again. you, yes. Uh, just to know that it's coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, this is, this is really interesting because, to my knowledge, which... Uh, I have quite a bit of knowledge about Israeli TV shows, uh, and you too, you watch yeah. a lot of them. Uh, but to my knowledge, this is the first period drama to come out of Israel, because, you know, we don't have a lot of period, period. in Israel to be able to do a period drama. But what I love is that this, it actually goes back before Israel was founded. Right. And it starts Before with, the kibbutz and uh, <laughs> uh, all of that. <laughs> Uh, it goes back to the times of the days of the Ottoman Empire, the British Mandate, British mandate right. and then the War of Independence. Um, and, you know, I've tried to explain this to Mimi many times, the, the, the Israeli divide between Sephardic and Ashkenazi, which is basically black and white, the Israeli version. So ridiculous. Uh, the people who came from um, European countries and the people who came from, the, from um, North Africa mostly. But really what, what uh, you see in this, because you'll hear them speak Spanish. Which is actually Ladino. I love that. It's actually Ladino, and this is because most Spain. of the most of the people who came from North Africa originally, what is it, five hundred years ago, from the Inqu- uh, were right, fleeing were the Inquisition in Spain. In Spain, exactly. So um, many of them in those days spoke Ladino, uh, and this, which so, is basically Spanish, it's basically Spanish. There are a little like a couple of differences mm-hmm. here and there, but it really basically is Spanish. Uh, and this show, t- uh, so this show is. Um, English, Hebrew, Arabic, and Ladino, which is great. Um, it's quite sad and dark. Yes, it is. It has its moments of brightness, but mostly it's a very um, a dark, sad. I mean, we, we've we only watched two, so, we, you know, it, it, it... Did we only watch two? So oh, they're far. long. They must so be long, they because are. it felt like more. They are, they are. Um, so, you know, uh, we can't really judge the entire series by the two episodes, but... A lot happened in those two episodes. A lot happened, and it's a very high-quality um, TV show. Very good acting. Yes, and uh, again, for uh, a country that's never done a period drama, you know, the, what they did was they have this little model... Uh, yes, and they show it to you in the beginning of the of the town of Jerusalem in the days of you know because we don't I don't know that there is any place in Israel where you can shoot something and it would be uh, credible. I mean, to, they probably still be. have it the old you know, but not in but not exactly in that kind of yeah. way, and it's probably hard to shoot in those places. Mm-hmm. So it's really sweet that they have this little tiny uh, model of the city. And anyway, I think they did a great job with this, and um, it's wonderful. It's a very interesting story. Check it out, The Beauty Queen of Jerusalem on uh, Netflix now. And now we have a little bit of a heads up, and the only reason that we've never that we haven't seen it yet is because I'm saving it for my birthday, which is next week. <laughs> and uh, you'll know why in just a moment. <laughs> it's a new documentary, again, on Netflix right now. It's called Halftime, and directed by Amanda Michelli, and it is the story of the stunning, wonderful, talented, incomparable Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. Now, we've been fans of Jennifer for a long, long time. For as long as I can remember. She is beyond uh, being um, a talented... 
uh, consummate professional. She is so smart. She's so um, her she's heart is in all the right in places. In all the right places, um, and she's so genuine. There's something so authentic and down to earth about open. her. She's, she's just so Jenny, Jenny from the block. You know? Yeah, Jenny from the block. <laughs> and um, she just gets more everything as she gets older. More right. beautiful. More. Uh, talented, deeper, more appealing. Um, she's just ripening. She's like a ripe peach. <laughs> well, she, as you'll see in the trailer, which we've seen, um, and it's sad, really, to know that everybody, no matter how successful, how professional, how talented, how beautiful, it, it doesn't matter. They all, we all suffer from self-esteem issues and from bullying and from haters and uh, critics who will always have something to say that's wrong or bad. Um, and you see all those insecurities and she, t- she talks about all of you know, what she's been through in her career, which is, you know, we see her as this accomplished woman. She's had to go through a lot of shit to get to where she is today. And I'm sure she's still taking a lot of shit, except now maybe she has less uh, need to take it. And she's a perfectionist person perfectionist yes uh all you need to do is watch hustlers to know that oh my god <laughs> hustlers. i'm ready to see that film again sure actually. i could do that okay um we have the screener mm-hmm. anyway um so that's why i'm saving it for my birthday it's both jennifer lopez it's inspirational it's song and dance it sounds like you know that's my lineup that's that and then the jane fonda uh, uh, and lily okay, tomlin l- let's just say it's jennifer lopez no yes, it's all yes, those uh, things okay no, 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 sure sure those... sure i mean it. i know you mean that. I'm, <laughs> I'm teasing you anyway um halftime jennifer lopez documentary is on netflix now do watch it and don't give me any spoilers ahead of my birthday <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now maybe. we're going to all things that uh, we've seen and know and uh, most Talk, of us. Talked about before, but before, want to revisit. Yes, um, we're, we're going to revisit The First Lady, which we were a little hard on in the beginning because we didn't really like it that much. It, well, the first it, two episodes it, were, were kind a of yeah, slow and shaky. But, but um, they have now really gotten interesting. They've gotten into the meat of uh, th- these first ladies and the periods that they were first lady, um, this, there are three things that are still true. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer is to die for. She yes. is absolutely, spectacularly brilliant in this. And um, I remember Betty Ford quite well, and she evokes her to absolute perfection. Um, Not just physically, but she captures her, her essence. Her essence. She radiates that that unique something that Betty Ford had. Yes, she was... Um, the je ne sais quoi. <laughs> well, she was independent in a time when still it was hard to be independent. And she was, uh, vulnerable. She was vulnerable. She was flawed. Honest. Honest, open. She was, she was a perfectly divine woman she and uh we see her go through her struggles and um her she turned those struggles into triumphs mm-hmm. um for for many people she was a wonderful role model even in her failings it, well, she was a wonderful in her role failings model. because you yes. know again if we go back to what we just talked about with emma thompson you know we are all flawed people yes. and trying to keep the facade of not being flawed it's ridiculous first of all exactly it's ridiculous and it puts such a high standard that it makes everybody feel inept yes. which you know we're not we're all flawed human beings uh, well most of us right. um, not, not you <laughs> the, uh, and then moving on to um Gillian Anderson's Eleanor Roosevelt mm, mm, um mm, mm. at first i thought okay this is she's becoming sort of the Meryl Streep of uh, uh television um between Margaret Thatcher, and Margaret Thatcher, yes, yeah, she yeah. right, but she actually really, I she evokes Eleanor in a way I've never seen, and uh, her growth as the character, uh, the woman, is marvelous. Uh, I knew Eleanor Roosevelt was a great lady, but I did not know how far ahead of her time she was. Mm-hmm. I did not know what a rebel she was. I didn't know what an extreme feminist she was. And they have uh, come head on with uh, the lesbian rumors. Yes, no, no more, more rumors. beating about the bush. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Liron. No more beating around about the bush is true. Um, 
uh, Lily Rabe. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, uh, and um, as Hick. she's anyway, she's just terrific. The period of history is fascinating. I don't even dislike Keith. Kiefer Sutherland that much as because uh, he doesn't whisper in this. Yeah, he, he's not the whisper. He's not the uh, the Jack whisper. And actually, he also he, presents a very interesting, uh, very multi layered absolutely uh, uh, version of. Uh, I think Roosevelt. it's probably well written also, yes. and he does a very good job with it. Uh, uh, as does um, Aaron Eckhart uh, with Gerald Ford. Yes. Um, there's a simplicity about him that, uh, and and you you understand sort of why poor Jerry Ford just sort of couldn't get it right because he had, you know, bad people. Uh, same people same who people made who Bush, made not, Bush get right. not get it right. <laughs> exactly. And then there's... Viola Davis. Viola Davis. <laughs> the worst casting choice I've ever seen in yeah, almost anything. Truly. Um, and uh, not only is she miscast uh, to her detriment... Which we've, we've talked about before. Yes, We're not gonna, but she yeah. uh, exacerbates it yeah. with... Uh, with I mean, an, an almost like a, um, a I don't even parody know. Yes, kind of and a, then to me it doesn't evoke Michelle. Lo- to me, this is an SNL performance. This is yes. the kind of thing you do on SNL exactly. when you're trying to exaggerate somebody's features or way of behaving. Except it's to, not funny because no, it's, it's not funny because it's supposed, it's supposed to be real, to be. right? Yes. Uh, and um, again, Obama comes off sort of as a boyish kind of a goofball, although mm-hmm. he is maturing as president, and there are many things that happen. And I so it's an interesting we, period of time, and. and we do get to see a little bit from the behind the scenes, which we didn't know about, no. for example. Well, I'm not going to tell you. No, don't. But there's no, a special, there's an LGBT episode. Yes, which is uh, very good. Which actually bookends uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's coming of, kind of coming into her own mm-hmm. in that respect. And uh, this the fight for marriage equality during Obama's. Uh, and uh, the fight for the ERA. Uh, all right. kind, you know. Anyway, right, right. Uh, in it was a great uh, Betty episode. Ford's time. Great uh, episode. Well, we watched several. No, but that, that oh, was that. Oh, that episode was, was that, wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you've tried it and you've said, eh, I say go back Absolutely. to it, stick with it. It, it. It's historically fascinating. The performances, two out of three, are absolutely brilliant. Yes, and two of the best. Yes, yes, absolutely. And... Um, and even the the Obama story gets better. Gets better, exactly. Yeah. And by better, I mean again. At the beginning, we felt they were treating them very much like, lightly, lightly, as like if it's like a frivolous, exactly. Yeah, and it's getting a lot more yes. substantial. Well, we now. have a lot of shootings. And, yeah, uh, that too. Uh, anyway, uh, it's still the on. first lady on um, Showtime Sunday nights. Watch it. Yes, it's still on. The, a couple more episodes, and of course, you can catch up with uh, on on uh, Showtime anytime on demand. Right. Okay, now uh, we come to the season finale of Gentleman Jack season two, mm-hmm. and uh, we have been a little hard on Gentleman Jack. It's uh, been hard on us. <laughs> uh, too much business, too much sadness, too much politics, too much politics, and and all those things. By the way, we're not Done saying brilliantly. they're not interesting. No, they are interesting, but there was but no balance. That's right, exactly. The personal was not uh, at all. Um, in as much of a highlight as the the business affairs, and, and when it was, it was it was hard. It was sad. Yes. It was angsty. Mm-hmm. It was unpleasant. Right. So, however, the finale yes. rectifies yes, a it lot delivered. of that. It delivers. Uh, you go out on a high. It's very well done. There's suspense. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, uh, they, um, you, you really get a feel that um, Ann Lister got her mojo back in oh, that last yes, episode. Indeed. She does her Ann Lister thing very well. Very, very well. Uh, the actors are, as always, wonderful. It is a breathtaking show to look at. Every other frame, I'm going, oh, my God, that's so gorgeous. Oh, my God, oh, I'd like to paint that. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. The lighting is spec- Everything about it is physically is perfection. And uh, the story caught up back up to itself. It became the show we loved. And um, I hope that uh, the season three will go back to the days of season one. I understand that yes, story I mean, wise, you can only you do can, what you can do. Right, it's a but true story. Ways, but there are ways of doing yes. it. And I think that uh, they, again, if they focused more, if there were more balance, and again, maybe COVID, blah, 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 uh, figured in. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm really glad that the season finale kind of went back to the good old days and showed that it was possible because we were disappointed with the season, but the season finale didn't disappoint. Not at all. Um, and now yes. to the 75th 
annual Tony Awards. Yes, briefly for you theater lovers out there. There are many of you. I know there are. And um, I just want to say, surprisingly, it was like the good old days. It was a really, really fabulous show. Mm -hmm. I want to take my hat off, stand up, Give a standing ovation and applause to Ariana DuBose, DuBose, who was a spectacular, splendid, fantastico, brilliant (laughs) host. Oh, fantastico. (laughs) Brilliant host. Uh, She was feisty. She was talented. She was adorable. She was funny. She was charming. She was real. She was... She put on a show all mm, by she, herself. Yes, all by herself. Oh, my God. Fantastic. She was amazing. Brava. Brava. Um, the show was pretty good. Um, it didn't drag. It never dragged. Um, we only have one fly in the ointment. I have a couple of flies in the well, ointment. Well, the big one. Then. Yeah, the big fly in the ointment was the paltry tribute to the greatest Broadway composer, as far as I'm concerned, who ever lived, but at Stephen least, Sondheim. But at least in the last fifty years, if 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 it's, if, yes. if people think it's debatable, I think yes, I'm in, sure you can think it's debatable. Yeah. But, but to it, me, no. But even even but, not to you, in the last fifty years, he has been the most significant, the most uh, influential. Yes. Uh, I think writer on Broadway, yes. and uh, to give him that. I mean, One, I mean, a few little clips. I of, mean, Bernadette of, was wonderful. Yes, but it, Bernadette but, was okay. She was fine, um, but it's not enough. Not enough. There should have been medleys. People should have come out and and done um, um, songs, pieces of the things that they. There's many people are still alive who starred oh, in many absolutely. of his shows. Bring them on. Uh, have Katrina come out and sing uh, <laughs> "Being Alive," uh, which is on Broadway now. There are and many people. So who many are, things. Have come. More film clips. He deserved more than three and a half minutes. Mm. He deserved a nice big chunk of time. I'm mm. not sure what they could have cut out, but they could have cut out plenty. I also thought the uh, uh, whole in memoriam was um, very um, v- uh, uh, like an awkward afterthought. and an afterthought, and yeah. too much Billy Porter, not not enough oh, dead I love people. Billy Porter, but well, uh, I, I thought there was too much emphasis on him. They kept cutting well, away and saying in memoriam, and then they. But get actually, put... no, I have to I have to contradict you because um, in during the Oscars we had what the complaint, oh it was awful, but the complaint we had mostly in the Oscars was that they pulled away from the sh- the the reel, yes. showed the people singing while the reel was going on, but we couldn't right. see it. So I appreciated that when they were cutting to Billy Porter, yes. it was when they were stopping the exactly. reel. Exactly, but still, at least that. Uh, and I think he was wonderful. He, he I, was I loved right. his performance. Um, I wanted. Uh, Anyway, I was just so disappointed by the Stephen song. I'd been yes. waiting for it all night. Yes, we said, and, oh, they're going to uh, have a the oh, huge thing. They must fat. have a huge... Because they had plenty of time. They had, what, six months at yeah. least to prepare. And as my friend Louise Sorrell said, she and uh, um, she wanted to see more people from the past 75 years. Mm-hmm. Th- that would have been also bits and pieces more than they had a reunion of this, two people come out and present who were in a show, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. Well, if you noticed, most of the people who present, they try to make them appealing to the audience that is not necessarily a theater goer. Like, they had people who are more movie stars yeah. or TV stars because they always try to bridge that gap and show people, hey, theater is cool too, come see us, we have we have Sarah Paulson too, you know. But I, I think that, uh, and what was she wearing? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, it looked like a dress that the the stepmother or one of those ugly stepsisters would wear in a modernish production well, she of Cinderella, always but she dresses is divine. very differently. Yes, I love her. She's a, an individual. <laughs> she is a, oh, she's so unique. Yes. Uh, but and I, you know what? She pulls everything off. Everything. <laughs> well, because she's just so, 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 so chic. Anyway, so, um, yes. anyway, so that's, yeah, I mean, but, but generally it was an entertaining show. Yes, it was. And Katrina Lang should have been uh, nominated for, for Best sure. Actress. It was, it was conspicuous in its absence. Yes. Um, I don't know what the problem is. It's the but, same thing with Kelly. Yes. Well, but Kelly got nominated. Know, she just didn't win enough. I know, but I it know. was always like, what do they have against her? You know what? It's what, you, it's what your mother used to always say. They're just jealous. They're just jealous. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, now, thank goodness she has one for the band's yeah. visit. But yeah. just the nomination yes. was necessary. So, yes. otherwise, it was a great show. I yes. really enjoyed it. It went by fast, all three hours of it. They yeah. only went over a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ariana DuBose is going to be a massive 
massive star. And rightfully so. Yes. So. So, thank you for joining us. You can always write to us, ladypartstv at gmail.com. We always love hearing from you. And we hope we give you lots to think about, watch, do, and uh, come back later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.